Greetings, everyone. I'm Charles Jennings with Truth and History Ministry. I want to start by telling you an experience that I had several years ago. I attended a weekend seminar. It was not a Bible seminar. It was about American history. And I was sitting in the classroom over in the state of South Carolina, and there were three or four university professors there that were giving uh, their lecture on different aspects of American history. And one of the professors that was talking that day was from the University of Louisiana. And I forget exactly what all he was dealing with, but all of a sudden he said, you know, the Galatians were Gauls, the same as we refer to that area, that greater area of France. And they received a letter from the Apostle Paul. I'm thinking, the Gauls, that is a historical term. It's, it's somewhat of an inclusive term of not only referring to the people of ancient France, but, you know, Alsace, Lorraine, part of Germany. Uh, and it was inclusive of a, of a lot of people in Western Europe. And I got to thinking, why did he say that? So I went up to him after the class and he said, oh yeah, that's common knowledge that Paul preached to the Celts. Well, you know, it was good news. It was unexpected news. It was great news. So what did he mean? So when we come to the book of Galatians, the Apostle Paul knew who he was talking to. He was talking to the Celts. He was talking to the Galatians. He, and that word Galatians is a derivative of the word Gauli or Gaul. So... Um, it was prophesied in, by Ananias in Acts chapter 9 that Paul would bear the name of the Lord before Gentiles or nations, kings, and the children of Israel. So we automatically know the mission of the Apostle Paul. I mean, within just hours of his conversion, the Lord makes it clear, you're going to you're going to go to the house of Israel. I'm calling you out of Judaism. Transform your life, and I'm going to send you to the Gauls or the Celts. Well, who are the Celts? Well, I have a brochure before me right here that I have put together that um, it's small, eight and a half by 11, both sides, but it's powerful. And... Paul makes several references in the Galatian letter to Israelites. Now, I don't have time to read all the references, but it says this. I'm going to read you several of them. No man is justified by the law. He's referring to the Old Testament, of course. Number two, redemption from the curse of the law. Number three, the Abrahamic covenant. Number four, righteousness is not by the law. Number five, Israel, the heir, once in bondage. Number six, redemption for Israel, once under the law. The next one, Galatians, the sons of God. The next one, reverting back to law keeping. The next one, two sons, two covenants. And the last one, circumcision, the yoke of bondage. All those references referred to Israelites. Paul knew who he was talking about. Now, I want to define some terms here. The term Celt. 
And I'm taking this from Webster's New World Dictionary, College Edition, 1968. Celt, originally Briton, the Gauls, a Celtic-speaking person. The Britons, Irish, Welsh, Highland Scots, or Celts, one of an ancient people in Central and Western Europe, reputedly including the Gauls and Britons. And then the definition of Britain, B-R-I-T-O-N, of Celtic origin, a native or inhabitant of Great Britain or the British Commonwealth of Nations, a member of an early Celtic people living in the southern part of Britain at the time of the Roman invasion. The Roman invasion took place in first century. So Gauls equal Celts. Gaul and Celts equal Galatians. Galatians equal Israelites. Israelites equal Gauls and Celts. Now here's a statement from the Wycliffe Bible Encyclopedia. Ethnic Galatia. This term referred to that northern region of the large inner plateau of what we term Asia Minor. It draws its name from the Gauls or Celts who first invaded Italy circa 390 BC and later crossed the Bosphorus and over ran Asia Minor circa 278 to 277 BC. In other words, the Celts, being Israelites, were dispersed by the Assyrian captivity and they went north and west and they were in that area of northern Europe and they came down and invaded what we now call Turkey, or in New Testament identification term was Asia Minor. So they came down. They were Israelites. They just went up north and made a U-turn and came back south. And Paul was preaching to them, and he knew that they were Israelites. Now, let me read you something else from the World Book Encyclopedia. Galatia was a Roman province in Asia Minor. Galatia was named for the Gallic tribes called Galatea, if I'm pronouncing that right, by the Greeks, that invaded Greece and Macedonia and overran Asia Minor. In the 200s BC, Attalus, king of Pergamum, defeated the Gauls in 239 BC, and forced them to settle in the part of ancient Phrygia, which became Galatia. World Book Encyclopedia. So I'm not making these things up. Gauls and Celts related. Equal Galatians. And I read this from a history of Europe. I'm not going to read everything. I don't have the time. This is from A History of Europe by J. M. Roberts, 1996. Quote, For a long time, Rome's reach did not extend outside the Mediterranean lands and even in Italy, only up to the valley of the Po. In that region, they encountered Gauls, whose forebears had sacked Rome at the beginning of the 4th century. These barbarians were part of a family of peoples spread across northern and western Europe and the higher reaches of the Danube. Their history requires notice, for they reached the highest levels of culture attained by any Europeans outside of the Mediterranean world before being conquered by the Romans. They were the Celts. They were the Celts. Between 600 and 400 B.C., they settled in Spain, the British Isles, and over virtually the whole of what is now France, which became, for the Romans, Gallia, Gaul, the land of the Gauli, and then in the Po Valley. 
And this is what it says. Some of them in the third century went so far as to cross to Asia Minor, where they settled in what was later known because of them was later known because of them as Galatia. That was the history of Europe by Roberts. Now, a quote from the book, How the Irish Saved Civilization by Thomas Cahill. Quote, one branch of the Celtic tree settled in present-day France and became the Gauls. And then related tribes settled the Iberian Peninsula, that's Spain and Portugal, and became great sea traders. In the 3rd century BC, Celts invaded the Greek world, advancing as far south as Delhi, Greece, and settled in present-day Turkey, where, as the Galatians note the similarity of sounds in Celt, Gaul, and Galatian, they were recipients of one of Paul's letters. This is taken from secular history, just like that university professor that I talked to several years ago from the University of of Louisiana. He said the Galatians were Celts, and Paul wrote to Celts. Well, who's Celts? They're Anglo-Saxon. They're Britons. They're French. Germanic, plus more. So, let me read you another quote. This is from A History of Wales by John Davies. Quote, The current Orthodox view is that the Celtic language and the essentials of Celtic cultures were brought to Britain in the centuries after 600 B.C. by small groups of migrants. Hmm. Who were the migrants? They were Israelites migrating. The history of the Celts became interwoven with that of the Romans and the Greeks. Their descendants in Galatia received a letter from Paul. Folks, I didn't write this. Secular historians wrote this. Let me read you another quote. From the Bible Exposition Commentary, the New Testament, Volume 1, by Warren Wiersbe. Quote, This matter of the founding of the Galatian churches has kept serious Bible students at work for many years. The problem stems from the meaning of the word Galatia. Several hundred years before the birth of Christ, some fierce tribes migrated from Gaul, that's modern France, into Asia Minor, and founded Galatia, the country of the Gauls. That means the Celts, that's our ancestors, moved south and crossed the Bosphorus, that narrow stretch of water there, into Greece or, or into Asia Minor, and Paul wrote to them a letter. Well, let me read you another quote. This is from St. Paul's Epistle to the Galatians by J.B. Lightfoot, who was an English theologian and a, the Bishop of Durham. This is what he said. Let me, I'll just read part of it. The tough vitality of the Celtic character maintained itself in Asia, comparatively unimpaired among Phrygians and Greeks. And it has done as it has done in our own islands among Saxons and Danes and Normans. There is every reason then for believing that the Galatian settlers were genuine Celts and of the two main subdivisions, not which modern philologers 
have divided the Celtic race. They seem rather to have belonged to the Simrai, of which the Welsh are the living representatives. Thus, in the age when St. Paul preached a native of Galatia spoke a language essentially the same with that which was current in the southern part of Britain. How much plainer can we get? The Galatians were Israelites. They were Celts, and Celts are us and related people. I know that there's this technical definition of who is Celtic and who is not. But, you see, in the generic sense of the word, in the Gaulish sense of the word, they were using it to define the people of northwestern Europe and the British Isles. That's us. Paul wrote this letter to us. And this letter of Paul was a message of the gospel that was promised to Israel. Well, let me read you one more quote. This is from the Nelson Study Bible. And these sources that I'm reading from are standard uh, biblical and secular sources, reliable historical sources. The Nelson Study Bible, the New King James Version, 1997, quote, In Paul's time, the word Galatians had both an ethnic and a political meaning. The ethnic Galatians were Celts. The ethnic, by blood who migrated from Central Europe to Asia Minor in the 3rd century B.C. They settled in the area around Ankara, the capital of present-day Turkey. In Paul's day, the native Galatian dialect was still spoken there, although Greek had been accepted as the language of business and diplomacy. By New Testament times, there was a Roman province called Galatia. I share these things with you to help dispel these false ideas that Paul wrote to non-Israelite people. Because this false dichotomy that we have been taught in fundamental churches, Bible colleges, seminaries, that the whole world, everybody, the whole population of the world is divided into two classes. Number one, Jews. And they, these professors say that Jews means all 13 tribes of Israel. And then the second classification is Gentiles or heathen. That's the rest of us. I mean, that's white people, black people, oriental people, and everybody in between. Jew and Gentile. That is wrong. What the Bible is talking about when it uses Israel and Greeks or Judah and Greeks is talking about the two houses of Israel, Judah and Israel. Now, also this, this false idea in theology, which is rampant in these ministries on television, that the Jews are Judah, and they're Gad, and they're Manasseh, they're Ephraim, they're Benjamin, they're all 13 tribes. That's nonsense. That's false. And They've possessed the land of Palestine over there in the Middle East. And they're God's chosen people, but yet they're Christ rejectors. It doesn't make sense. 
the gospel was promised to come to Israel. And Moses prophesied that the Lord's going to send you a prophet that you will receive, yet you will hear and receive that he was talking to Israel. And this is proof that the gospel went to those people of the New Testament that Paul was speaking to, and they were Israelites. Now in this series, I am offering free of charge, absolutely free, this little booklet entitled Tracing the Steps of the Apostle Paul. Israel in the book of Ephesians. The Corinthians were Israelites. Uh, Israel in the book of Romans. And who were the Galatians? They're small trifold brochures that go right to the point. You don't have to read 500 pages of theological treatise to get the point. They go right to the point that the Anglo-Saxon, Germanic, Scandinavian people and related people that Paul wrote to, his gospel came to us, and we believed. And that's why we're Christian. God bless you.